Hi, my name is Liz Wheeler, and this is my white paper on Echo Art Education. Echo Art Education in the Classroom, the Community, and Beyond. Here's a photograph of our school wetlands. This is the nature trail at the wetlands, and that's probably where my interest in Echo Art Education began. Uh, several years ago, I began co-teaching art and um, ecology lessons with our BioSteam coordinator, Liz French. And so through my research, I've learned more about what art educators worldwide are doing in the field of echo art education. Echo art education is the integration of art education and ecology. I think it's a very natural fit. I feel like in art education, we frequently do lessons about um, animals, flowers, trees, nature. And I think adding in ecology, just that little extra um, bit of um, knowledge for our students. I just think it fits very well. Here's a photograph of Family Day at the Wetlands where we put on display all of our Echo Art projects. Here's my table of contents. Um, probably the part I'm most excited about is in the center section where I talk about uh, tips for art educators for trying Echo Art in their classrooms. The benefits of art education. Um, I'm going to read you a quote from one of my favorite researchers in the field. Her name is Hilary Inwood, and she's a Canadian researcher focusing on echo art education. She's worked with pre-service teachers, undergraduates in all different degree areas, and um, practicing art educators. And I really love what she has to say about echo art education. She says, Echo Art Education integrates knowledge, skills, values, and pedagogy from the visual arts, art education, and environmental education as a means of developing awareness of and engagement with environmental concepts and issues such as place, interdependence, systems thinking, biodiversity, and conservation. Echo Art Education really began with the 1960s environmental movement. Um, that's when you first saw the first um, environmental art installations, the first Echo Artists. Um, and so it began there. It did not really work its way into the um, everyday classrooms of art educators until the 1990s and kind of the resurgence of the environmental movement in the 90s. Um, in 1990, oh, I believe it's 1994, Susie Gablick wrote The Reenchantment of Art. She's another author that I've really um, found very interesting um, through this project. Her ideas are even farther out, almost environmental activism as a work of art itself. She really pushes the boundaries of what it means to make art and what our responsibilities are as artists. Um, to really make an impact on the world around us. And here are some kiddos making artwork at a family day event. I also learned through my research about the concept of environmental empathy, which basically it's a little, it's a step farther just from being aware of environmental issues. Environmental empathy is, according to Sunasi and Bokeri, it's attachment to and caring for the natural world. So by learning about the environment, by creating artwork about the environment, it's students build an attachment and caring and a love for their environment. And so that's like what, what your goal in Echo Art, really your ultimate goal is to develop that caring, nurturing feeling towards, towards the world. I talked with our BioSteam coordinator, Liz French, about the concept of environmental empathy. She agreed it was important, and she also had a more practical, I think, point of view on it. She said that it's important to take that extra step and turn environmental empathy into action. Like, can students make that connection between, oh, I love this animal, and I think it's really cute, and I want to take care of it, to okay, so now I'm not going to throw my trash out on the playground because I don't want that animal to accidentally eat it because it smells like my snack. Um, helping them make that connection and take that extra step into action is important.
I really enjoyed reading about place-based learning projects and research happening in Echo Art Education. Um, I love the idea that um, environmentalism takes place in our our local environments, in our hometowns, in our cities, that this is not someplace far away, that our students make the connection between um, ecology and where they live. It, you're basically building an attachment to your place, a love for the place where you live. And so examples of researchers kind of focused on this place-based echo art education include Sunasi and Bokeri on the island of Marisha. They did nature walks, they did sketchbook activities, they did lots of landscape paintings um, to encourage that place-based connection. Also, I looked at Inwood. She did collaborative murals inspired by endangered species and local wildlife in Ontario. Researchers in Mexico used theater activities, which I thought sounded so fun, and art activities to raise awareness of the threatened habitat of the black howler monkey. Um, the howler monkeys live in the habitats near the schools where the research was done, and it became an important issue for the students there. In Massachusetts, pre-service teachers helped pre-K students create a bird sanctuary, and they created the bird bath from recycled materials, and they developed um, outdoor artwork to surround it. So lots of different possibilities with place-based learning. Um, we display the student artwork at the wetlands, so it's artwork about the wetlands on display at the wetlands. Um, and I think it's important for kids to see in person what they've learned about in class. Um, they're so excited when they get to stomp around in the wetlands or um, catch minnows at the wetlands. Um, on our family day, we have so many different activities and stations where they actually are hands-on, um, you know, doing different activities in the wetlands. So echo art education is also a way to teach environmental awareness, to bring up environmental issues um, that are important in your community. And so a lot of research focused on, you know, how to best explain and help students understand environmental issues through echo art. So my favorite part, the ways that I have found, um, I guess my top three tips for incorporating echo art education in your classroom. So if you're wanting to give this a try and you're a little like a little hesitant, here are some easy ways to introduce it. Number one, try out recyclable materials. I think most art teachers, we do this already, but I think the difference with an echo art lesson is that you point it out to the students you know, you're like, hey, we're going to paint on cardboard today because this is a way to, to recycle. This is a way to make less trash. Our school makes a lot of cardboard trash. And so when I collect it for our projects, you know, we talk about that. What could we use it for instead of, you know, putting it in the trash? Um, I would suggest just picking one material, one recyclable material to incorporate into a lesson you already have. For example, if you're painting an animal, paint it on cardboard. You know, it doesn't have to be the entire lesson. That can be overwhelming. Just pick one component to do with recyclable materials. If storage is an issue, um, try stamps. I did a class set of stamps with my kindergartners from uh, plastic bottles for making flowers. We did cardboard tubes for making different shapes. And then, you know, storage is less of an issue. And they still get that idea that, hey, I can reuse this. I'm recycling, I'm helping. Oh, and most of us already know this, but talk with your custodians, talk with your cafeteria staff. They can be on the lookout for all sorts of things for you. Um, I have one sweet custodian that brings me any art supplies that she sees people um, tossing out. She'll bring them to me first to see if, um, if we need them in the art room. So here's some yellow warblers on cardboard. And honeybees. On cardboard also, the stamping in this was done with bubble wrap that we saved and then used for our honeycomb stamps. Another easy way to incorporate echo art in your room 
is to focus on native species. So take any lesson, whether it's butterflies or owls or birds or turtles, any animal that you already do or plant, really, any flower, and do a little research and focus on a native species instead. So, for example, my typical bat lesson that I would do in the fall has now become my little brown bat lesson. There's some kindergarten little brown bats. My owl lesson is now my barred owl lesson because barred owls um, live in our wetlands. And here's a slide from a presentation that I did with Miss French. Um, we co-created this presentation. When we co-teach lessons, she usually teaches about the animals and then I um, step in and help out um, with the art process. Oh, step three, focusing on your place in the world. Start local. So if you're doing a landscape, do a landscape of your local area. Um, so we are kind of in the foothills of Georgia. And so when we do a landscape, we do a mountain landscape and we talk about our environment. It could be any space around your school. If it's an outdoor classroom space, it could be the playground. You know, and that can lead to other activities you know your playground space you may want to add in a pollinator garden um, you may want to extend this into something that benefits the entire school but start small start with just a project about your place your place and your students place in the world here's more slides that we use this is the little brown bat and our, our number one message we try to get across is don't throw trash outside. I teach K1 and 2 students, and that is something that they can do. They can, they can make that, um, they can make that choice, and they can make that impact. And that's that's important that it's something that they can achieve and feel like they're impacting. And if we do that, the little brown bat will say thank you. So to get the word out about our Echo Art activities, we do our yearly art show at the wetlands. There's my daughter Lucy at a wetlands um, native bird table on the wetlands trail. And here's my son at, the, um, at his yellow belly slider display at the wetlands. My goal is to increase um, our presence, I guess, in environmental um, events in our community. We do the Wetlands Day in April, and I'm hoping to participate this year in our tree festival in March and have a display of student artwork there, just to continue getting the message out about our Echo Art activities. So my conclusion is that this Echo Art education is a way that we can help our students understand their place in the world, um, make them aware of environmental issues, help them develop empathy for the world around them, which I think is something that we can all benefit from. I have resources from UGA and georgiawildlife.com, Keep Georgia Beautiful, um, other websites about native species and some art activities for kids. If you need a few more art activities to get your mind, you know, I like to see examples. So these um, websites have some great examples of different echo art activities you could try out in your classroom. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Bye.